Council to administer the affirmation. Please raise your Please raise your right hands, state your names, and state whether you affirm to tell the true ho truth, yeah, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your answers to all council member questions and in your testimony before the committee. Paul Bader, I do. Tom Sorrentino, I affirm that I will tell the truth. Sarah Kaufman, I affirm that I will tell the truth. Kenneth Chan, I affirm that I will tell the truth. Thank you, and thank you all for being here today. Congratulations on your nominations, or my condolences, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, no, just kidding. We guys, thank you guys for being here with us today. Uh, we're going to offer you an opportunity to give opening statements. We can start with Mr. Bader, and we'll move over to... Mr. Chan, thanks so much. Thank you. As I've indicated before, my name is Paul Bader. Um, Speaker Adams, Chair Powers, and members of the Rules Committee, I would like to express my gratitude and appreciation to the Queens County delegation, many of whom I have known for years, for selecting me as the Queens representative to the Tax and Limousine Commission. This selection represents their recognition of my many years of community service, working to maintain and improve our wonderful city, and my work experience in various jobs related to the taxi industry and the movement of vehicles along our roads and streets. Madam Speaker, let me uh, also express my appreciation and my shared concern relative to the industry and how it's changed, as you indicated, from when I drove a taxi, which is many, many years ago. The world changes and we, have, we must adapt to it. I have been involved in transportation issues in New York City much of my life, including membership on the transportation committees of community boards in both Manhattan, where I was the chair, and Brooklyn. Increasingly, the for hire vehicle industry is a larger part of our transportation system, and this is a way of being involved in creating a better transportation structure. Professionally, I've been a taxi driver, yellow medallion for a fleet, a truck driver, and a driving instructor in this city, where I've lived my whole life. Additionally, having worked in city government in a variety of positions dealing with its communities and neighborhoods, I'm extremely knowledgeable regarding the streets and byways, and more importantly, the flow and rhythm of how people move around this city. I am aware of some of the many initiatives the Taxi and Limousine Commission is working on to protect and assist the drivers, as well as ensuring that they are receiving their fair share of the fare, while also improving the riding experience for the customers and like forward to work with them on these and other issues affecting the for hire vehicle industry in our city. Supporting the livelihood of our drivers is a crucial and vital part of promoting the health and welfare of our drivers across this spectrum. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Thomas Sorrentino, and I would like to thank you all for the opportunity to be here today to speak with you. I currently serve as a commissioner on the Taxi and Limousine Commission, having previously been appointed by Mayor Bill de Blasio in August of 2017. I have served our city in that capacity over the past six years with commitment and devotedness, and I have tried my best to address the issues at hand with care, objectivity, and thoughtfulness. I would very much like to continue being of service to our city and using my experience and background to work and collaborate with members of the commission, including the TLC staff and colleague commissioners, along with the various stakeholders to address the challenges and the issues facing the industry, to formulate policies and regulations that take into account the concerns and considerations of the parties who provide such an important part of our city's transportation system, as well as to ensuring that the riding public is well served throughout all parts of the city in a safe, accessible, and economical way. I am enthusiastic and humbled to be considered for reappointment to a full term on the commission. During the time that I have served on the commission, I've had the privilege of having worked with several TLC chairs and acting chairs, along with the talented members of the TLC staff to help address many issues, challenges, and the changing landscape that the industry has faced over these many years. Over the past years, I have sat through many TLC public hearings and have listened firsthand to the testimony of many individuals, including drivers, medallion owners, FHV licensees, coalition groups, elected officials, TLC policy makers, industry experts, and members of the riding public. And I have heard their views and opinions on a variety of topics and issues relating to accessibility, diminished medallion values, medallion owner loan and debt concerns, 
FHV licensing policies, driver pay, safety, and well-being considerations, economic and environmental impact concerns, as well as matters that impact the running public in providing safe and reliable transportation. I am proud to have worked in dialogue with the professional staff members of the TLC and with colleague commissioners to help formulate policy and to pass rules and regulations to address the many issues that have challenged the industry and in trying to make things better for everyone. Some of the positive achievements that, and results that I have seen and have been part of include passing broader accessibility regulations, placing limits on, and caps on FHV licenses, considering the oversaturation of such licenses at the time, the medallion relief program, and driver pay enhancements. I believe that the time I have spent serving on the commission, the experience garnered therefrom, my professional background, and my ability to work and collaborate with colleagues, policymakers, and industry participants are attributes that will allow me to continue to provide service that is meaningful and that has value to the commission as it leads the charge in regulating the industry and ensuring that all the stakeholders are well served. One of the focal points that we must always keep in mind is the health and well-being of the drivers. This must always be a paramount consideration in setting policy. The drivers are essential in making the entire system work and are the backbone of them providing the transportation to the riding public. To ensure their well-being, it is important for us all to be mindful of both the quality of life and economic considerations, including both driver pay and expenses. These considerations should be factored in while setting policy to ensure a proper balance between the drivers and the, all the industry stakeholders. Lastly, as a lifelong New York City resident, I have the desire to continue to serve our city, and I am committed to dedicating the time and energy needed to fulfill the responsibilities of the position and to perform the work that needs to be done as we move forward as a city and work through the challenges that lie ahead. I want you to know that I have taken this responsibility of being a member of the commission seriously and dutifully and have not missed a commission hearing or vote during my tenure. I thank you for this time. Good afternoon, Speaker Adams, Chair Powers, and members of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. My name is Sarah Kaufman, and I come before you today seeking your confirmation and consent to serve as a member of the Taxi and Limousine Commission. Thank you in advance for your consideration and for the opportunity to tell you about myself and why I wish to serve on the TLC. I currently serve as the interim director of the Rudin Center for Transportation at the NYU Wagner School of Public Service. In that role, I conduct research and hold gatherings to discuss policy and planning issues around mobility. I am presently working on two research projects. First, assessing the city of Buffalo's response to the blizzard in December of 2022, which I hope will be instructive for all cities' responses to extreme weather, as it is inevitable everywhere. Secondly, I'm working on a project applying urbanism principles to the future introduction of autonomous vehicles in American cities. I also host panel discussions and keynote lectures on topics like flooding and transportation, new technologies and accessibility, and the future of micromobility in New York City. I've worked at the Rudin Center since December 2011 and have, throughout that time, worked a great deal to lift up the voices of women and other underrepresented communities in transportation leadership. I have a longstanding interest in gender-based travel and how cities can improve women's safety and caregiving needs. I have developed research and workshops around women's challenges in transportation. The concept under the term pink tax on transportation is that women in New York and other cities tend to pay a premium for their personal safety when possible by turning down off hours employment and opting for more expensive transportation modes, such as choosing taxis or rideshare over public transportation in the name of safety. I have also tried to bring light to other challenges for New Yorkers. This year, I worked with a graduate student to develop a project around language access in the subways, offering suggestions to improve mobility for New York's 1.8 million residents who are considered having limited English proficiency. And in the Emerging Leaders Program that I have run for eight years, I train early career transportation professionals to apply innovative projects and processes to their workplaces. I have designed the program to prioritize admission to individuals who would not otherwise have such an opportunity. Before working at the Rudin Center, I worked at MTA New York City Transit for nearly five years. I worked in the Strategic Improvements and Best Practices Group, where we looked at comparable tra transit systems abroad and considered lessons learned. Primarily, I'm, I'm proudest of two accomplishments during that tenure. 
First, I launched the MTA's Open Data Program, which supplied subway data to the back end of apps and organized the developer feedback forum. Secondly, I created a social media plan for New York City Transit, getting information like subway delays and weekend construction changes out to the public. I am proud of developing such useful tools for New Yorkers. Prior to the MTA, I worked at Do It between 2006 and 2007. <clears throat> there I worked on the NiceWin network, the private emergency responder wireless network that would ensure communications between first responders during a crisis. I had taken that job right after graduate school at NYU, where I got my graduate degree in urban planning in 2005. During that time, I interned at both the Economic Development Corporation and Do It, and worked on campus with Mitchell Moss at the Taub Urban Research Center. I am a native of New Rochelle, New York, and attended college in St. Louis, Missouri at Washington University. I've lived in New York City since August 2001, and have lived in seven different apartments in Manhattan and Brooklyn. I am now settled in East Harlem with my family. My husband, who is in his 22nd year of teaching middle school English, and my two children, who are both in middle school. Growing up in the suburbs, I always yearned for the city, the vibrancy, the way everyone fits in somewhere, and the chaotic order of things. I always felt that the city just worked. As I learned throughout my career, some things are not as orderly as they seem. I have constantly worked to improve the city I love through both low-hanging fruit and ambitious goals. I have called upon my background in technology to solve some of those issues. This effort has often included collaborating with the Taxi and Limousine Commission, where helping to solve the organization's challenges has been a through line in the last 10 years. Together with the previous commissioner, Mira Joshi, I hosted a hackathon around taxi driver shift changes, where we looked into how to better organize the 4 p.m. turnover for more taxi availability in Manhattan and more localized driver transfers. I served on the data committee, assessing what information should be required from ride hail providers and how to protect drivers' and riders' identities. In addition, Commissioner Joshi and I convened a public forum about accessibility and for hire vehicles in the fall of 2019, especially concerning the timeline of regulating wheelchair accessible vehicles. Finally, under Commissioner Joshi, the TL st TLC staff provided input on my work, bringing innovation to paratransit, encouraging the use of taxis and for hire vehicles to augment accessoride services. With previous Commissioner Aloisi Heredia Jarmashuk, I served on the Black Car and Livery Task Force, working to get more drivers back on the streets. Throughout 2020, I assisted on the TLC led Surface Transportation Recovery Committee. I believe that this work has had at least somewhat a somewhat positive impact on New Yorkers' lives and the economic opportunities of drivers. Still, while it has been rewarding to help the Taxi and Limousine Commission think through pressing problems on the sidelines, I'm eager to have a stronger voice on policy. I believe I can be helpful by putting ideas into practice when grappling with the TLC's most pressing challenges. I am eager to learn from my colleagues on the commission and work closely with the TLC staff it will be an honor to serve on this commission and to help usher the organization through the next few years. Mostly though, I want to help the greatest city in the world move its people more efficiently, comfortably, equitably, and sustainably. I hope you'll see my candidacy as valuable to the TLC and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you for your time and consideration. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Powers, Speaker Adams. Council members, my name is Kenneth Chan and I come before you today seeking your confirmation and consent to serve as a member of the Taxi and Limousine Commission. Thank you in advance for your consideration and for the opportunity for me to tell you about myself and why I wish to serve on the commission. I am a resident of Brooklyn. I haven't arrived in New York City as an eight-year-old immigrant. I am a proud product of New York City's public educational system. After graduating from the Bronx High School of Science, I attended Cornell University as a chemistry major and then Syracuse University College of Law for my Juris Doctorate degree. Uh, New York City has been great to me and my family. While we experienced firsthand the challenges of being immigrants with modest means, through perseverance and entrepreneurship, we were able to get by and later achieve a comfortable living. I have three children. The, old, the older two are graduating college this month, and our youngest is a junior in high school. 
Currently, I'm the owner of a small business called Navistone LLC. Its primary business activities are property management and development. I have successfully developed and managed underused and underinvested properties and transformed them into high functioning facilities that has house business operations such as <clears throat> manufacturing, commercial kitchens, logistics, art studios, and sound stages. Prior to Nevistone, I worked at three large U.S. high-tech companies. I served as Asia Regional Intellectual Property Council and then as Director of Intellectual Property Strategy for Corning Incorporated. As Regional Council, my primary duties were to support the company's growth in Asia, build a group to provide sustained intellectual property support for the company's innovations and help resolve disputes over the company's intellectual property rights. In doing so, I hope to conclude significant corporate development projects and several high-tech manufacturing investments in Asia. I also like company efforts to analyze new policies and regulations in the region to identify potential impact on the company and develop plans to address these potential impacts. While in Asia, I engage actively with other MNCs as well as NGOs to nurture relationships, share knowledge, and advance advocacy efforts. I also interacted regularly with U.S. government agencies such as U.S. Patent Trademark Office, U.S. Trade Representative Office, and U.S. Cons Consulate Offices to share observations and ideas. As Director of Intellectual Property Strategy at Corning, my primary focus there was to help revamp and improve communication and processes among groups in research, intellectual property protection, and technology commercialization, and doing that among the different product divisions. So this effort required that I work with multiple functional groups within multiple product divisions in order to strengthen a company's intellectual property rights, protect its innovations, and enhance the commercial potential of research results. Before joining Corning, I served as Intellectual Property Counsel and Director of Trademark and Copyright at Avaya Inc. Avaya was a spin-off of Lucent Technologies Inc. that focused on telecommunication applications and devices. As a member of this newly formed entity, I helped shape the company's intellectual property focus and practices and collaborated with product managers to develop business models for many of the company's innovations. At Avaya, I supported research and development efforts as well as led and successfully concluded numerous technology and M&A transactions as well as strategic agreements with telecommunication service providers and other key business partners. Prior to Avaya, I served as corporate counsel at the Pratt & Whitney Division of United Technologies Corporation. Pratt & Whitney is an aircraft engine manufacturer of both commercial aircraft and military aircraft. At Pratt & Whitney, I gained extensive experience in supply management, commercial transactions, and technology development and implementation. In addition to leading first-of-its-kind corporate-wide supply management initiatives, including the first B2B e-commerce initiative, I also help ensure compliance with applicable regulations such as Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, OFAC, U.S. Export Control Regulations, and ITAR. Working at these three large companies has given me insight into complex organizations and structures including working within complex regulatory frameworks. It also helped me develop collaboration skills to work with multiple stakeholders in order to complete projects. As I stated earlier, New York, <clears throat> New York City <clears throat> has been great to me and my family. As a passionate and committed lifelong resident, I'm eager to give back to the community that has provided me with countless opportunities. Uh, it is this desire to contribute that has drawn me to the opportunity to serve as commissioner for the Taxi and Limousine Commission. 
I'm also passionate about serving on the TLC because I believe in conjunction with fellow commissioners that we can create a positive impact on the lives of New Yorkers by guaranteeing access to safe, reliable, and affordable transportation options. I hope to help usher in a new era of innovations in a way that protects and uplifts drivers and consumers. If confirmed as commissioner, I hope to lean on my professional, small business, and personal experience to work collaboratively with fellow, with fellow commissioners to continuously improve transportation for all New Yorkers. Thank you for your consideration of my nomination to the Taxi and Limousine Commission. I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.